In this video, I want to show you an example of sort of the other really common use case for um, integration by parts, and also kind of an unusual case that doesn't show up very often, but is still kind of interesting. So for the first one, um, I want to find the integral from zero to one of inverse tangent of theta d theta. Okay, so this one is different for a couple of reasons. One is this is a definite integral, um, so uh, we haven't done one of those using integration by parts, although it's quite the same. You just do the integral and then evaluate it at the endpoints. Um, and it's also a little different because it doesn't have that form of a product. So this will be more like the logarithm example that we did earlier. Okay, so um, I'm going to use the same idea that I did for the logarithm case. And essentially the idea is I want to take the derivative of inverse tangent because I know the derivative of inverse tangent. So because I know how to take that derivative but I don't know how to do the integral, that's a good sign that I'll be successful using integration by parts. So u is equal to inverse tangent of theta and dv is everything else. Everything else is just d theta. Okay. Well, du is going to be the derivative of tangent theta. Well, I know how to do that. The derivative of tangent theta is going to be one over one plus theta squared d theta. And if dv is d theta, then that means v is just going to be theta. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug this example into the integration by parts formula and see what happens. So this thing is going to be equal to uv. Well, u is inverse tangent of theta and v is theta. So theta inverse tangent of theta. And just to take a quick break here, we can kind of see why taking the derivative of this expression is going to give us inverse tangent of theta, because when we do the product rule, we'll take the derivative of theta, so that'll just go away, and that'll leave us at inverse tangent. Okay, the problem though is that when we do the other one, theta times the derivative of inverse tangent, that'll give us some extra garbage. So this other term that we're subtracting off is going to get rid of that extra stuff. Okay, so um, I have here u v minus the integral of v, which is theta, du, which is one over one plus theta squared, d theta. Okay, and our theta is evaluated from zero to one. Now, something kind of weird happened in there, which is I've got theta times inverse tangent of theta, but I have an integral where theta is from zero to one. So I don't want a function, I want just a number at the end of the day. This um, definite integral represents a number. So that's actually okay, because what that means is we want to evaluate this expression from theta equals zero to one. Okay, so um, this term is sometimes called a boundary term. Um, and in a lot of cases, it happens to be zero. Um, but even if it's not zero, that is okay. We just evaluate it at the endpoints. Okay, so don't be scared of that. It just means that we have to evaluate this um, as we at some point. So um, at this point, we're left with um, theta inverse tangent of theta, which we evaluated a couple of numbers. So this is, again, just a number, minus the integral from zero to one of this thing. Well, if you look at this a minute, then you can actually see that this is something we can solve by u substitution. All right, so um, you get to, in the process of solving this, use more than one technique. We use integration by parts first, and then u substitution second. Okay, and combining these techniques is going to be a really powerful way to try to solve integrals. Okay, so um, when I try to solve this, 
I notice that I have a theta squared here and I have a theta d theta on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my u, uh, but I don't really want to call it u just because I've already done a u. It wouldn't be a big deal if I did, but I'll call it w instead. So I'll call w theta squared. Okay. And then dw I'll call 2 theta d theta. Okay. So let's see what happens when I make this substitution. So I'm only doing that in the integral, I'm not doing that in the boundary term. So I've got theta times inverse tangent of theta from 0 to 1, and that's my theta. I want to be specific here because I'll have multiple variables floating around. Minus, and then in purple, just to indicate that I'm doing the substitution, I've got an integral of, well, dw is 2 theta d theta, but I don't have that 2. So I'm going to do a 1 half over 1 plus w dw. Okay, so I pulled out a 2 um, in order to combine it with the dw, which means I needed to have an extra 1 half so that I haven't changed the value of the integral. Okay, so then I have w well, w is going from theta was 0, so w is still 0. And when theta is 1, well, it happens that w is 1, so it didn't change in this case. Okay. Now, this is actually not great, because I have essentially a 1 in the top of this integral and 1 plus w. So what I'm going to do is, in fact, another substitution, and I'll do, let's say, t is 1 plus w. Okay, so this is really a sign that I didn't pick the best substitution in the first place. I could have chosen w to be 1 plus theta squared, and this would have all happened in one step. But it's okay not to see ahead of time exactly which substitution will be best. You can do a series of substitutions. So if t is 1 plus w, then I'll have basically 1 over t inside the integral, which I can integrate dt is going to be just dw. Okay, so let me rewrite this now. Theta times inverse tangent of theta from theta equals 0 to 1. And really, if I wanted to, I could have evaluated this earlier so I didn't have to keep carrying it around, but I'll just do all my evaluations at the end. So I have minus 1 half and then in blue, so I pulled the one half out of the integral, and I've got one over t dt. All right, so if w was zero, then t is one. So t equals one. Um, and if w was one, then t equals two. So integrating from one to two. Okay, we are almost done. <clears throat> okay, so rewriting this one more time. Theta times inverse tangent of theta from theta equals 0 to 1 minus 1 half log of t from t equals 1 to 2. Okay, and now we can integrate this thing. Okay, I don't need to worry about absolute values because these are both positive. All right, so if theta is 1, then I just get 1 here times inverse tangent of 1. Well, if you think back to the unit circle, inverse tangent of 1 is pi over 4. Okay, minus, plugging in theta is 0, so I'll get 0 times, turns out also 0. So pi over 4 minus 0. And then minus 1 half times log of 2 minus log of 1. Well, log of 1 is also 0, so I just have log of 2. And writing those closer together, pi over 4 minus 1 half log 2. Okay, so this is the exact value of the integral of inverse tangent of theta. Okay, so um, that is a 
another case where we can use integration by parts. Our initial integral didn't look like a product, but for these inverse functions where we know how to do the derivative, it still can be a useful way to go. Okay, so that's the more common situation. Um, now I want to show you a pretty unusual one. So this one is mostly just fun. The, this sort of integral does not turn up very often in real life. So for this example, I want to do the integral of e to the x times sine of x dx. Okay. And notice that this does not actually fit into our pattern for when integration by parts is a good idea. Um, and it turns out that it only works because we can use kind of a peculiar trick in order to solve this thing at the end. Okay. So what I'm going to do, and this is not something that should be obvious, is I'm going to do u equals e to the x and dv equals sine x dx. Okay du equals e to the x dx and v will equal negative cosine of x. Okay, so, um, oh goodness. All right. Um, so if we go ahead and just do this, even though it doesn't look like this is going to simplify anything, something kind of interesting will happen. So, um, uv is going to be negative e to the x cosine x minus the integral of v du, so negative cosine of x times e to the x dx. Okay, and this looks distinctly not simpler than what we started with. Okay, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is I'll clean up these minus signs. So negative e to the x cosine of x plus integral of e to the x cosine x dx. And then I'm going to use basically the same integration by parts I just did. So I'll do u is e to the x dv is cosine of x dx. du is e to the x dx and v it's going to be sine of x this time. Okay, so now if I go ahead and do that one, I'm carrying along this first term, negative e to the x cosine x, plus, and then do integration by parts on this. So I've got uv, which will be e to the x sine x, minus the integral of v du, so sine x e to the x dx. Okay, so at this point, I've got back the same integral that I started with. So you might think that this has been a complete waste of time and there's nothing that we can do. I'm not going to be able to make any progress. I've just gotten this really ugly situation here that is, and, and then has the same thing that I started with as part of it but here's a really cool trick. Okay, I'm going to name this whole integral i for integral, and notice that this is also i. So if I use this equation, I've got i equals, um, I'm going to factor out e to the x in these two terms. So I've got e to the x times sine x minus cosine x and then minus another i. Okay, now this is going to be magic. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this i over to the other side. So 2i equals e to the x times sine x minus cosine x. And then if I divide both sides by two, I've got an expression for the integral. 
So my original integral is equal to 1 half e to the x times sine of x minus cosine of x. Okay, so that's it. Um, astonishingly, even though it didn't seem like this was going to work, in fact, at this point, you might have thought that everything was bad and we were never going to get a solution. Turns out, with a little bit of algebra, you can actually solve for the um, integral. Like I said, this doesn't turn up that much, but I think it's kind of an interesting example. Um, now, one thing that you need to be a little careful of in this case is because we didn't um, ever actually do the integral, we've somehow never come up with the plus c. Okay, so technically, this integral, which is an uh, um, uh, indefinite integral, should have a plus c in it, but that never happened. And the reason why, if we kind of look back at our work, why that never showed up, is because we have some plus c as part of this thing, and some plus c as part of this thing, so we kind of canceled those a little bit, um, but we really, we really didn't. So um, I could have one value for plus c here and a different value for plus c for this one, um, I can't actually just add them together like I did. So um, it's important to not forget to just tack on a plus C here, just like always. Okay, and then this is an expression for the integral um, that, that we had.